today we're going to be discussing step prep. Stay tuned. In my introduction to the channel, I told you guys that I received my passing step score. So what I'm going to be doing today is going through my entire study process with you guys, breaking it down for you so that you guys can receive that passing step score too. This is especially useful if you guys are doing self-study. A quick little background on my process um, to start studying for step was that I actually had to take comp, which is an exit exam that's cumulative, uh, very similar to step. However, I didn't have enough time. So what I was doing was surface memorization versus for step prep, I actually started conceptualizing. However, that surface memorization took a lot of time and energy and I was able to pass the comp exam. However, I was very much drained. So I took actually three weeks off after that exam to recalibrate and get myself back together. I stand behind this decision, even though my original goal was to only take two weeks off because once it got back time for me to study again, I was actually excited. I was like, this is my thing. Like I'm used to studying, it's normal for me. I'm happy to be back at it. And I say that's a good break. My step prep window was from the second week of May until the second to last week of July. And even though that's around a two and a half month period, it was probably only like two months and a week for me because I ended up actually going to Spain for a little bit in the middle of this. And I don't necessarily think that you should take it in the middle, but I knew that I needed to do something fun and exciting. I knew I wanted to go to Barcelona before I even left the island. And I suggest the same for anyone who's prepping for STEP, especially if you did have something stressful like an exit exam before. You need to do something to recalibrate, regroup, and enjoy life because once it's time to actually start studying for STEP, there's no more time for fun. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was actually granted the opportunity to self-study and so I didn't really know what to do. I mean, I was so excited to be able to self-study but I didn't know where to start. Fortunately, you have this friend named Google and I Googled like step one study schedules, how long should I study for step four? And I came across what once was known as med school tutors and I believe nowadays it's known as blueprint. Yes, blueprint. And I came across a study sample schedule and basically I'm going to discuss it with you guys, uh, break it down so you guys know what I'm talking about. But I used that for most of my study and then I'll talk to you later about what I did after I finished their guidelines. So when it comes to outlines and guidelines, you guys don't have to follow them directly to a T, at least I didn't. Um, yes, I took the time to read through BRS Viz for all the subjects, basically. I made sure to do my Euro questions. I did 80 questions a day instead of what's saying here, like 25 questions, two of those. Um, I also struggled with this memorizing flashcards thing because as I told you guys in a previous video, I'm not a flashcards person, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, and yeah, I just went through this until I ran out of uh, systems to run through. And then that's when I switched over to just reading through first date. At the bottom of the schedule, it gives you a summary of how much time you're probably going to spend if you follow this schedule to a T. Um, seeing those hours was not cute for me. <laughs> I did not agree with these hours. I started uh, studying maybe around 9 a.m. every morning. And then I would stop maybe around 6 or 7 every evening. I didn't try to overdo it because I was just easing myself back into studying again because I took that three weeks off. Um, so I would suggest the same, don't go too crazy or too hard in the beginning, especially if you have like a window like I did where I was trying to take it in maybe a little bit over two months. Just ease yourself back into it and then when it's like closer to test day, go harder if you have to. I told you guys before that I'm not a flashcards person, but I think the main issue was a lot of when people say do flashcards, nowadays they're talking about on the computer. And that was not working for me. Like I couldn't keep up with it. Even though it was on the schedule guidelines, I still struggled to make sure that I actually did those. So what I ended up regretting was not learning that I could do flashcards more so if it was a repeatedly wrong concept that I kept getting wrong in questions or something I kept getting confused when it came down to question time. So uh, near the end, I actually started writing out 
on physical flashcards and I liked that a lot more than I did computer flashcards or virtual. So I was telling you guys earlier, I did 80 questions a day and in order to review these questions, I brought back something I learned way in MCAT prep, which is known as a why I missed it sheet. Some people call it UWorld journals, whatever you wanna call it. Um, you're basically reviewing why you got the questions wrong or if you got the question right But it was just because you were guessing you should also write that down um, And then I did that virtually in the beginning and I kind of regret doing it virtually so long because again I'm not too much of a virtual person. I enjoyed it more near the end when I was doing it on pen and paper So I'm gonna show you guys both of those so you have an understanding of what I'm talking about this is my virtual why I missed it uh, page. This is actually renamed to never miss it again step prep. I'd write the date in one column, the question set. So if I use Kaplan or UWorld, the number in case I didn't really make it clear why I got it wrong or what the subject was about, I would come back to it and review it. Um, here you can see that this was a biostats question. And the most important for me would be the what did I learn or why won't I ever get it wrong again. Uh, that way you have a good understanding of like what I was saying. Why are you getting these questions wrong? Is it the subject? Is it the way that the question is asked? So that way you can start getting them right. I even color coded them the best that I could because there's not that many colors you can use. <laughs> but that also helped me to recognize if there was a certain subject I needed to spend more time on. The number of practice exams you want to do is actually completely up to you. I know that I started in the beginning easing my way into two Kaplan full length tests and I made sure because of my window that I took the next week off so only one week was dedicated to actually taking the full length exam and then the next week was study days. Make sure to treat this like you would actual test day. and. Um, Take, when you're on your breaks, make sure that you're not on your phone so that you can stay in the mental mindset as you would be on test day. Make sure that you have your snacks lined up. You figure out what you're going to be snacking on on test day, when you're going to be using the restroom, when you're going to need to be up on caffeine. For me, I took 10 minutes after every block of the exam. Some people prefer to keep the one hour window in between the um, blocks, so like halfway in between. That's all up to you. Either way, you're gonna have to figure out a way to survive that seven hour exam with half of a functioning brain. So make sure you figure that out. On test, practice test day, not on test day. Before practice test days, make sure that you stop studying around a reasonable hour. For me, it was between two to four because I would normally stop studying on most days between seven and eight. So this way your brain can be nice and refreshed and ready to go on the practice test day. If you guys recall, on the med school tutor uh, study schedule, it basically went through systems. And once I finished with all the systems, I actually started reading through first day the individual subjects. Um, I would do that throughout the day and then make sure to still get in my 80 questions along with my New World journals. Of course, there's going to be times when you don't want to read through first day, you don't want to do practice questions. So what do you do during those times? This is a time where you go to YouTube and you find yourself some learning um, videos that you would actually enjoy. So I liked Dirty Medicine and then I think it was High Guru. He was another guy that I watched and art videos are another way to learn without having to put too much energy into it. And talking about RX, I would suggest purchasing that program because you get first aid, you get flashbacks, you get practice questions and videos all together in this one little package. Don't wanna study anymore, you don't have anything left in you. A way to combat this is trying question competitions where you and your friends try to compete against each other to who can get the best score. Uh, study dates are also great because that way you have accountability and motivation. Try to combat the stress the best way that you can. Uh, for me, it was exercising, it was taking days off after practice exam, a day, let me make that clear, take a day off <laughs> after the practice exams, and whatever else, things that help you to distress, try to incorporate that into your daily and your weekly schedule. The day before your actual test day, find ways to enjoy yourself and relax. For me, it was watching Disney movies with my niece. For others, it might be video games, going and grabbing lunch with your friends, whatever it is. Try to get your mind off of this test. Let's talk about test day. 
What they always tell you is make sure you get an adequate amount of sleep the night before test day. It didn't work out that way for me. I had a lot of things running through my mind the night before test day, so I didn't sleep too well, even with my melatonin and everything else. So if you don't sleep well, that's okay. Naturally, your anxiety is probably gonna keep you awake and alert because I couldn't even stomach too much caffeine or coffee that morning because I was very nervous and anxious. So that'll take care of itself. Just make sure you go in there with a positive mindset, keep your confidence, know that you've prepared for this properly, and do your best. That's all you can do. When you see your mind going negative, Go to the bathroom, give yourself a mirror pep talk, pray, meditate, whatever it takes to get you back to, I'm taking this test, I'm gonna do all that I can, and I'm gonna leave the rest. Because you can't have a negative mindset taking this test. It's exhausting by itself, physically and mentally, so just make sure that you are calm, cool, and collected all throughout. And yeah. Post-exam day tips I would have for you is have something fun lined up to do. For me, it was a birthday bash trip the next weekend with my sister and friends. You just need to have something to look forward to and quite frankly distract you until your report comes back. And when your report comes back, if you pass, amazing congratulations. If you didn't pass, it's not the end of the world. What you did was you took step and that's a huge accomplishment. That's no easy test, that's a seven hour test. And so you need to celebrate that and do something great. If you walk out feeling horrible, that's completely normal. I swear I did, I swear I probably failed. It was a horrible feeling afterwards. What I had to do, because I had, I, I would say more anxiety after the test than I did before the test. So I had to find a way of, to fix that. For me, it was church. Find out what works for you guys to help you to combat those negative anxious feelings. And again, I'm a huge believer in delayed but not denied. So even if you didn't pass, it's not the end of the world. You can always retake the exam. Just don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dreams. And that will be our next discussion will be delayed but not denied. Talk to you guys soon.